Harding, Shemansky & Company is an accounting firm that first opened its doors in 1975 by Al Harding and Richard Shemansky. Today, they are one of the largest locally owned accounting firms in southern Indiana. Their clients range in size from small businesses to billion dollar corporations. They span every industry, finance, communications, construction, mining, manufacturing, nonprofit, and many more. They have offices in both Evansville, Indiana and Louisville, Kentucky. Here in Evansville, Harding, Shemansky & Company is located in the First Security Bank Building at 21st Southeast 3rd Street on the 4th and 5th floors. When I visited Harding, Shemansky & Company, they were undergoing a large renovation. This is their first major renovation since they moved buildings in 1997. During this renovation, they plan to repaint the walls, change furniture, replace the carpets, and expand the support staff area. This is all supposed to be completed in the next three months. I sat down with Trudy Stock, CEO and President of Harding Shemansky & Company, to get a better idea of what this company is all about. Why was Harding Shemansky & Company started? Well, that's a great question, and I actually uh, did a little research so I could be prepared to answer that because it was started um, in 1975, so it was a little bit before my time of being here. Um, but my predecessor in this role as president um, did a, we had a reception about four years ago, and he told kind of the story about, about how Harding got started, so I thought I would just share some of that, okay. some, some of that with you. So 1972, Al Harding and Dick Shemansky, who were the founding fathers of this, of this firm, they were young junior partners in a firm of John F. Berry and Company. And the, several of the young partners there were not happy with the management philosophy of the senior partner, John Berry, and the frustration came to a head when all the young partners decided to leave the firm to the point that John Berry was left with no firm to continue in business. So Al and Dick, along with Herman Stevens, uh, formed a new firm which was called Harding Stevens Shemansky and Company. So that was formed in 1972. In 1974, after attending an AICPA management conference, Dick convinced Al they should adopt a one-firm approach to serving clients. And that's different. A lot of accounting or law firms have each partner and they have their group of clients that they serve, and they share resources and support staff and certain administrative functions, but they really don't work together in serving clients. And so, so Dick went to this conference and said, really, we need to serve clients as if they're a firm client, not Dick's client or Al's client. And so they, they adopted this philosophy. Herman Stevens, who was the other partner at the time, uh, was not interested in that approach. And so he elected to depart from, from Dick and Al, and that's when Harding Chemansky was formed. And so it was really kind of a couple of events that formed the management philosophy and the structure of the firm as it exists today. Uh, how many total employees do you have at this location? At this location, we have about 100 employees, and that's really made up of two pieces. We have Harding Chemansky & Company, which is the accounting firm, and then we also have a medical billing and consulting practice that is part of, it's a subsidiary of Harding Chemansky & Company, and there's about 20 employees, so 80 on the accounting firm and 20 in the medical billing piece. When did you become president and CEO of Harding Chemansky & Company? Uh, a little over um, three and a half years ago, almost four years ago, so it was January 1st of 2011 that I became um, the current CEO and president. What is the company's ultimate goal? So our, our ultimate goal, and the best way to describe that is if I look at our, um, our mission statement, and it's really to help our uh, clients, our employees in the firm, be more successful. And so we want to uh, bring a service to clients to help them in their businesses meet their goals, um, be successful in what they're trying to accomplish. Through that, we, we have the role of really uh, helping our employees be successful and they're successful in the things that they, they have the opportunity to learn here, the way they have uh, the ability to serve clients, grow in their career or, or grow to a point where they can they can launch careers away from here. Uh, and, and what we found is if we're serving clients well and if we're taking care of our employees that really that equals success for the success for the firm. So we're really intentional when we put that mission statement together that serve, you know, our we want to help clients be successful, employees be successful, and the firm be successful. But we think if we do the first two, the third one's going to come naturally. Uh, how many clients do you have? So the firm, and this is a statistic I didn't have, so I appreciated getting a heads up on that. Um, so we have about a little over 2,800 clients. 
uh, and that's in our two locations. We have an Evansville and a Louisville location. And then I was curious about how many of those I serve, and, and my number of that is about 260. So I've got about 260 clients that I serve. And that's any, anywhere from a small 1040 to large to a large corporation, uh, but about 2,800 in total. Okay. In your role as the president of one of the largest accounting firms in this area, have you faced any challenges being a female in what used to be a predominantly male position? I would say in my role, I haven't, uh, to me, I don't feel like I've had a, any challenges being a female in this role. And, and probably um, part of it is because when you get the title, there's a certain level of respect that, that you get because you're in that role. Um, I would say that, that my challenges of, as a female may have been earlier in my career. And you know, what I found early in my career is that there, there is a kind of informal mentoring that goes on. And some of that is going to happen. Um, so that's going to happen naturally, but I think it tends to happen more with guys mentoring mentoring other guys, men mentoring men, as opposed to women. Um, so I think I, I didn't have maybe some of the same mentoring opportunities, or, or could have not had some of the same mentoring opportunities. I was fortunate enough, at a certain point in my career, one of our uh, partners came along beside me and served as an informal mentor and helped me gain an appreciation for what kinds of things I needed to do to um, to allow to make sure that the management of the, of the firm knew where I wanted to take my career. And so the thing that, you know, I, I thought, keep your head down, work hard, do a great job, and you'll be rewarded. And what I learned as I talked to people in, in partner positions was, you've got to tell people, hey, I want to get to that next level. I want to be a manager. I want to be a vice president. So you've got, one, you've got to express that. You've got to be confident and know you can do it. And you also have to um, share with them what kinds of things you're doing that, that show you're able to operate at that next level. So sometimes, you know, people use the, the, the terminology toot your own horn. You've got to tell people, hey, here's what I'm doing. And, and it's not, for me, it's not natural. I think for a lot of people it's not natural. But if you don't do that, if you're not, uh, as you're growing up in your career, if, you, if you're not going out and saying, hey, I want to be a manager or here's some things I'm doing, here's what I'm doing to attract new business or here's what I'm doing to be involved in the community, you know, the partners aren't going to know that, and so those are a couple things that I learned is the importance of finding a mentor that can guide you and direct you, and that it's not all about keeping your head down and doing good work, that you've got to, you've got to tell people where you, where you want to go. Um, again, fast forward to the position I'm in now, I think networking happens different with, with women than it does with men. I don't play golf, so I'm not on the golf course for you know, four hours necessarily networking with, with other professionals. So I've got to be intentional about it. I've got to find a way to get in front of uh, some of our clients or some of our uh, people that I need to network with. And, and so it means picking up the phone and calling them and, and having lunch or creating that, that face time. So probably some of those natural networking opportunities that men have. I don't say that women don't have them. They, they just don't come natural for me because I don't spend my time on the golf course or maybe spend my time in the same way some of those men do. Um, but I... To me, it hasn't gotten in my way of being able to do what I need to do. Okay. Thank you very um, much. You're welcome. I also talked with an employee to talk about his career at Harding Shemansky & Company. I'm Rod Meyer. I'm Chief Operating Officer at Harding Shemansky. How long have you worked here? I have been with Harding Shemansky for 25 years. Do you enjoy working here? I, I do enjoy working at Harding. It, for the most part, uh, except during busy season when we work 60 to 75 hours a week and then it's it's not quite as fun. What does your day-to-day -day schedule look like? Well, my day-to-day -day schedule fluctuates quite a bit depending on what time of the year it is, but um, right now I'm working a lot on budgeting and on compensation for 2015. I do a lot of scheduling of the scheduling for the firm, so I'm dealing with people getting work assigned, knowing you know what people are working on and um, which people are available for work and how to match up you know with experience level and get the right work into the right hands. What is CPE? Uh, CPE stands for Continuing Professional Education and it's uh, it's classes that we have to take to keep up to, to date on uh, current topics. Why is it required to take a CPE class? Well, it's required because you to to be certified as a certified public accountant, you have to get 120 hours every three years. So you have to take the classes, uh, and you have to take them in different areas: tax, accounting, and auditing, ethics, and that sort of thing. And uh, you do it 
And once you get your 120 hours, then you can maintain your license for another three years. Harding Shemansky and Company first opened in 1975 by two men who disagree with the authority. Who would have thought this company would become one of the largest accounting firms in southern Indiana? They have 100 employees and over 2,800 clients that range every industry. Currently, the company is going through a recruiting process. They do this every year in the fall. Basically, the employees recruit, interview, and hire potential accountants. So if you're a college senior and looking for an accounting job, go to Harding, Shemansky & Company and get an interview today.